Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Drones Down Under. I'm Danny. I'll be your host tonight. And with me is the lovely Sean. How are you, mate? Ah, Danny, thank you. I thought he'd never say those words again. At least I got the name of the podcast right this time. (laughs) (laughs) We've we've forgiven you, mate. It's all good. It was a few episodes ago, so see if you can find it. And um, here we have an exciting episode today. We're talking about the new DJI Mavic 3 Enterprise and the Mavic 3 Enterprise Thermal. That's it, Danny. Exciting time. Um, Obviously, I've got the thermal behind me, which I'm sure we'll talk to in a few minutes. And um, there's the newbie, mate. So I'm, I'm sure you'd, if you could fly down from Sydney, be, hey, you would. Um, I, would, I, would. I really wish I could. <laughs> so there it is. Um, probably for those who are familiar with the Mavic 3, um, not overly uh, anything new as far as the airframe's concerned. Except but obviously, the little party hat on top of it. <laughs> that, that's it, the party hat. <laughs> and clearly uh, a, a, a much larger sensor there, you can tell there. So, um, and yeah, there's the branding. So I've taken the props off for anyone who's thinking, oh my God, he's got a, a drone that's turned on and you'll see in a minute why we have, but uh, it's and all thought, safe. In the previous brief, I thought you said you were going to fly through the office to use that uh, 360 obstacle avoidance. <laughs> not not in this video. That'll be another one, I'm sure of it. We'll, te- we'll put it <laughs> to the test, guys. Let us know in the comments if you want Sean to fly through the office. <laughs> Um, mate, well, I guess uh, by the look of it, we've got two versions. You mentioned there's the thermal version and then the standard enterprise version. What can you tell me the difference is? Well, obviously the extra sensor. So um, you've got your wide and your your standard sensor in the um, the enterprise model. And uh, hopefully you can see there there's um, the IR and thermal and wide, is, um, which is we don't have IR, obviously, on the other model. So right. there's three sensors there. Uh, essentially everything else is the same um, other than the orange writing on the arm here. Yeah. Also just notice one difference about the model compared to the standard Mavic is the beacon on the rear. Yep. No, no, both, both got it. Nice. Oh, it's compared to the, sorry, the standard uh, standard Mavic 3. So you've got right, okay. for your ADS-B, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. So obviously like the, uh, the M300, as you know, um, Got the beacon in built, so they've done that same obviously on the enterprise range now. So beauty, and probably while because obviously the other one's got the uh, um, the hat on, so okay. USB C yeah. three connector there, and obviously the two um, uh, able to actually put on any any type of third party or um, DJI peripherals that'll come through. I guess once this is all in the market. Nice. But yeah, it's very light. Um, I think uh, 915 grams for the enterprise model and 920 um, for the thermal model. Nice. So not not much of a massive difference over the uh, standard Mavic 3, you know, the standard models. No, it doesn't seem so. And I think the, from the watt hours perspective, 77 um, watt hours. So I think anyone wanting to travel with these obviously more than um, able to, I'm pretty sure it's the same battery size, Danny, on yeah. as the Mavic 3. Yeah, yeah, they're the same so. same battery. So if you've got a Mavic 3, you know, just if you like splashing out that extra bit of cash, then um, yeah. you can just use the batteries across all the models. Um, yeah. So you mentioned, so same battery. So what's the flight time like then? Flight time spec wise at this stage, um, as when part of our testing is, is, is 45 minutes. Now that's, under controlled environments and and we know how all that works when we actually use them in the field but do you um do you have any thoughts on the actual uh the actual flight time while you're out out doing your testing uh look i I definitely didn't get 45 minutes um but i'd say it was closer to 30 uh which is probably about right in in anything yeah so i think i'm confident to say we can get 30 minutes and obviously i was you know as during while i was flying them I was doing a fair bit of things, obviously, as when you get anything new, we want to try and see what we what's, what it's capable of. So um, I'll put that back there right next to the uh, uh, the, the trophy. <laughs> Mate, they are a good little uh, ornament. <laughs> For anyone else that's buying them out there, Sean's still selling one of his P4RTKs, so hit him up through the comments and socials if you want one. That's if it. If he's offering a DDUP discount. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
So oh, one thing to note as well, they're utilizing a mechanical shutter finally. Yeah, I mean, I think... That, with a mechanical shutter. <laughs> well, I think we know that that's obviously been one of the the strengths of the Phantom 4 RTK, um, actually the Phantom 4 range. So I think having that, carrying that mechanical shutter is great, given that it's also going to be, um, from what I understand, for mapping purposes, it's going to be traveling up to 15 meters per second. So you'd want a mechanical shutter at that speed. So it's a lot faster than I can run. <laughs> yeah. So I th we at this stage, we haven't tested that mapping at that speed. So we'll, I guess over the next few weeks, um, we'll do a comparison episode as well. We'll go pick a site where we'll use a, a Phantom 4 RTK. Um, and then we'll obviously compare that to um, the Mavic 3 Enterprise and we'll see what the data set looks like. So. Looking forward to seeing that data. Yeah, it should be good. Definitely. Um. So, mate, you've got a uh, remote control here on the on the on the desk. What can you tell me yep. about this? Um. Yeah. So, obviously, should be familiar for those of us who've uh, flown the M three hundred. Um. As far as the software is concerned, um. Well, let me go back a little bit and actually show you the control. Yeah, so very similar. So this is the RC Pro, is it? RC Pro. Okay. Um, you know, same sort of uh, controls, slightly different buttons um, to the 300, but essentially the same. There's nothing different there. So I guess um, with this remote, then it should be cross compatible between which I think it's cross compatible across most drones, even now the Mini 3, the Air 2S, I think, um, and now the Mavic 3 whole lineup, really. Yeah, and you know, familiar there with um, obviously antennas. Um, underneath's got uh, an, a, a micro SD slot, USB C for charging, and a HDMI. I, I, I'm not sure if it's a mini or micro HDMI, but definitely not a standard HDMI, which is what the M300 has. If we did have a connector, I would have uh, probably connected it so we can have a better experience. But here we are. Looks like some sort of tripod holder, so. Um, I don't know what it is. Um, with the M300, there is three areas to actually connect a strap, which we don't have, obviously, on this control. And um, the back of it, um, which is interesting for an enterprise drone that we can't connect an extra battery. That is one um, downside. I yeah. guess if you, you know, if you had a C-type uh, battery, you know, power bank or something in your pocket you can probably keep the uh, the remote charged and while you're using it but slight downside but also having the one remote that can run you know five plus drones is a pretty cool option yeah i mean as you know when you're at mapping you definitely your remote time you need you know good more than two to three hours sometimes so easy to just throw in a wb37 and you're off and running um however yesterday i had the same scenario where i did I uh, had the controller and wasn't charged. So I just used the power bank and charged it, which was great. Yeah, see, it works. So I did do that. It's not it's, um, not, a, it's not completely a perfect solution, but it helps. Yeah. So I think, again, nothing revolutionary as far as that, but, but it's good to have that consistency. So I don't think we want everything always changing radically. So nice. um, I guess from a user interface perspective, again, anyone um, who's been using the 300 should be fairly familiar um, you've got your whole health management system there, which is great. Um, firmware, uh, if you need to change any firmware and anything on um, on your management system, telling you what, what the current condition is. And we can just enter our camera view. And again, very familiar for the pre-flight pre checks. Um, obviously, what modes you're running, return to home, your max altitudes. Um, you know, how do you want to deal with obstacle avoidance? And you can close that off. And then essentially you're now into the, the view again, which which you're familiar with. Um, if if you've been using a 300. Nice. I haven't terribly flown the M30, so I'm not hugely familiar with all the functions of 30 yet, unless you are Danny, but yeah, it looks, um, looks pretty awesome. Like as I said, for anyone that's flown the M300 or I'm pretty sure it's the same app as the M30. Um, let us know in the comments if it is. Um, it looks good. It looks very fluid once you actually know where all the settings are. I'll admit it did take me probably about a month to work out where the gimbal pitch uh, icon was. I only found that a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
just had to guess when it was 90 degrees down. <laughs> the, I think given that we both clearly fly the 300 a fair bit, it's very easy to just get going with this, right? That That's the good part in this. Um, now, clearly, um, where we are today, we don't have all the specs in hand, so we kind of have to, to um, learn these things, what, what its capabilities are. And we're probably a very early version of firmware as well. So once the release is there, we'll, we'll see how we go. Um, and I'm sure, like every other DJI product, we'll get new features and any sort of bugs that'll that appear will be rectified i'm sure so yeah so you got your you know your zoom functions there but obviously i'm fairly close to all there um yeah um your ba battery notification the rc controller and then you got your st stocks um control notifications for rtk um your gimbal angles so I don't. Th we could do a deep dive on the control, I'm sure, in another episode. But I think the the summary in this is it's it's uh, for those of us who've been flying enterprise drones, especially the 300 or M30. I'm sure um, you'll be fairly comfortable with this and get started fairly quickly. One yeah. big selling point, I reckon, with this as well, Sean, the uh, size of the case compared to the M300 or the P4 RTK. Yep. So I'm going to put this down. down. Ah, yes. Then uh, I'm going to walk and I'll let you uh, talk. So, so I'm going to disappear for a second. So it's going to be nice and quiet. So we've got him walking across the uh, his uh, office. So one of the biggest selling points, I guess, of the Mavic lineup is the size difference, where that's the P4 RTK case. Then off to the left right now here, there is the Mavic Enterprise case. It's the size of a, size of a camera bag in theory. You chuck it, you know, it's easier to carry around. You don't have to lug in it. Uh, batteries are smaller, drones are smaller, much better footprint. I know what I'd rather take on site because it's just, it's just minimalistic in comparison. There you go. It's about half the size. So going forward, what would you rather pick? Would you rather take a Mavic to the field or would you rather take a Phantom? Because we all know what my choice is. Thanks for that little walk around, Sean. No worries. I think, um, yeah, loving the Phantom, but uh, been lugging it for years into fields and uh, definitely want something much more compact. And obviously, you know, unfolding the legs, um, sorry, the arms, um, putting props on or leave them on. Um, it's it's very quick to deploy, right? So that's obviously what we want. Mm -hmm. And I guess we can do some, um, the next few episodes, like we said, we'll do some mapping and we'll do some setup in uh, packing up as well so we can see how effective these things are. Okay. Sounds pretty good. I'm looking forward to the next few episodes and uh, learn a bit more about the Mavic 3 Enterprise and the Mavic 3 Enterprise Thermal. Have you got any uh, final thoughts on it? Yeah, I think um, obviously did some video, did some uh, image capture as well. The, the quality uh, looks great. Did some night capture as well, obviously, given we've got a reorg, so we are able to fly at night. Um, and we were just by our office anyway, so we didn't travel too far. So the quality looks good. I'll include that at, during the, um, the, the the publishing of this episode so you actually can see some of the quality of those. And, um, yeah, I, I guess as we get to know um the the different features we'll, i'm sure we'll, we'll use them as far as images definitely does jpeg and raw um in for video that actually, for those that actually like to process raw images which is just absurd <laughs> yeah um video however i haven't seen color profiles it seems to have one profile at this stage um but i'm whether that changes we don't know today. And uh, I guess that's about it. So I think actually we should probably have a quick look at the um, the, the capture side of things, right? So, oh, yeah. So anyone that's ever planned on an N300 or so, you'll recognize how quick and easy it is to flight plan. Um, as simple as picking, are you doing just a mapping mission? Click your route. You know, you've got your GSD there on, there, on the right-hand side. Pick what flight height. Obviously, pick your overlap to whatever you're after. 
So I have a lap server here. Defense. Yeah, so currently 70 on side, 80 on front. Right. So, you know, it's essentially so, same as the 300. So it's very easy to, to move across. If you've got a KML file, you obviously bring that in through the SD card, um, you know, save your settings and move on. Um, we can create a new route, select your waypoints, your mapping, oblique, and linear, right? So um, the one thing I've already raised um in our previous uh episode was um and this is even in the 300 danny as you know there's no 3d mapping but it's got to create two separate flight routes obviously so yeah. and that that's something that um the fan of rtk had for those of us who complained about this feature we pretty much fly two two missions essentially so it is a little bit of downside to it, but hopefully uh, DJI will hear our, hear our prayers. Until then, actually, we can't use um any... The SDK is not open for the Mavic 3 yet. So my, hopefully soon there will be, and maybe Drone Harmony will have a you know cross-grid pattern we could use. You mean as a third-party import? Yeah. Right. But until then, just got to wait for DJI to open up the SDK. Yeah. Most definitely. Well, the claim is we can map at 15 uh, meters per second. That's ridiculous. So I think we definitely want to see if that's possible. I'm looking forward to seeing the results. All right, Sean. Well, I guess awesome. I'll, I'll see you in the next episode. Everyone, Thanks, Danny. Until the next have one. Have a great day. Peace out. Take care, guys.